Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be using the draft workbench and the part workbench to create these ribbon type shapes. And you'll see that they have three dimensions. Let's bring up the draft workbench. So it, this is a ribbon in three dimensions and you can see it. this one's got some, uh, some shape to it. And the idea is that I want to create a banner that's going to go over a crest with, um, with text on front of it, in the front of it. So there's going to be a shield behind this and there's going to be text on it. So I just, you know, this is just something I was doing for fun. And I thought it would make an interesting video because this is kind of hard to accomplish um, because the tools that you think are going to work don't seem to. Um, so I found a way to do it and I wanted to share that. So let's get started. So real quick, before we get started, I want to show you what version I'm on. So I'm on, a, uh, if I go to about FreeCAD, you see I'm on dot one seven eleven nine fifty eight released September 2nd, 2017. So make sure you have probably at least that one. If you have a newer version of that, some of the things that didn't work for me may work for you. Um, you know, this is a heavily developed application, so features get fixed all the time. And that's one thing I like about working in it. If something's broken, I pretty much know it's gonna get fixed fairly, fairly soon, usually. So let's get to the, to the lesson for today. So to start, I'm gonna create a whole new document. I'm gonna keep these open as a reference, uh, you know, as a kind of a reference. And the first, you'll see what I did was I created a Bezier curve. So let's create that first. Um, so I did that in the draft workbench. And this is, kind of, this is gonna kind of help you with the draft workbench, I think, uh, because you know the draft workbench takes a little while to get used to. Uh, one thing that you gotta keep in mind is there's two types of things you're looking at. This is the working plane, and the working plane is currently in the Y, X direction. The working plane is independent of the view, so if I hit uh, one for front, you'll see the working plane stays in the y-x direction. If I hit two for top, you'll see even though I'm seeing the working plane, um, you know it's it's independent of the view. So I want to I want to work set the working plane to the front. So I've set my view to the front by hitting one, and when I on the one on the numeric keypad. So when I go to um, oh I already clicked it. So when I, so I clicked it and it and it set to front. So uh, you can change the working plane. So it saves at the top. You'll see it's like that. If I click it again, now it's at front. So now you'll see um, it's in the ZX direction and the working plane is in the ZX direction. The reason that's important is because snap tools um, can snap to the working plane and I, I've started to use that more. So let's start with adding our Bezier curve. So I'm gonna use this tool here this is to create a Bezier curve. And I've created a Bezier curve that I liked with my ribbon. Now this doesn't mean this is the way you, you have to do it, but it's just the way I did it. So what I did was I was working in threes. So I started here and I went in and I clicked on every th on every corner at, th at intervals of three or every interval of three around my shape. And that just gave me a shape that I really liked. Again, you know, do the shape that, you, that best fits what you want. And then I went to the center here and then I went directly below it because I'm just trying to get some uniformity. And I went over to here three from the edge. So I went one. And then I traced around what, what I would call the bounding box of the curve. I don't, that's probably not the correct term. And that's the shape I want. That's the general outline of the, uh, uh, the ribbon like from, from this cross-sectional view. So I closed that. So now I have my uh, ribbon shape. But I want to move the ends of this ribbon up into space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, change my working plane to the Y X and um, that's just gonna be the top. So if you can, if you can work within the uh, top front and side, your, your life will be a lot easier because it, otherwise it can get confusing fast. So the next thing I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be moving the end, I'm gonna be moving the end points of these um, in the Y direction, negative Y direction and positive Y direction. So let's do that. So to do that, I'm gonna select the Bezier curve and we're gonna edit that. So this is edits the active object and you can see now I have points uh, to edit with. And we're gonna be moving these points in the Y direction. So first I'm gonna do is select them. Now, one thing to keep in mind is when you're selecting, um, you kind of remember that you're selecting through layers of stuff on the, on the uh, working surface here or working work area. So like, if I want to select this, if I have it like this, it may get confused. Or if I try to select this, I'm selecting it through the working plane and you might not get it. See how I can't select it? But when I go here, now I'm able to select it. And you know it's selected because it disappears. 
I think that could be a better interface than that, but I don't know. So I'm going to just press the Y key so that I'm constrained to the Y direction. Now, even though I'm constrained to the Y direction, I can still snap to the working grid. So this endpoint li lines up with, oh, I guess three in. So I'm going to go three down just for giggles. So now you see I'm moving this, I'm creating a three dimensional version of this. I'm going to do the same thing for this side here. I'm going to select it. And now I've stayed, I stayed locked in the Y dimension. Uh, so that's after that first move. So I'm, I'm selecting off the grid just for a reference point, but you see it's only going to move it in the Y direction, not to the grid. And if you don't, if you have uh, any of these other snaps in place and you don't hit the Y, it's going to move it to the grid. So that can be real confusion, confusing. So that's my basic shape. The next thing we're going to do is some extrusion to get this into a 3D shape. Now, after I hit close on that last screen, what I want to do is I'm going to take this shape and um, I tried a bunch of things. I tried, to doing, tried doing offset and using shape binder with edges and that didn't work. Uh, I tried a bunch of things. So this is the one that worked. So I went into part design, or I'm sorry, part, I say that. And what I did was I extruded the selected sketch. So what that allows you to do is extrude this line and it says sketch, but it's gonna work with uh, things other than sketch. I don't know if that's a feature or on purpose or it's gonna change later, so. I don't know. So I'm going to be extruding it along the Y axis. So I'm going to change this to a one here and that should stay as a zero. Now you can extrude along multiple axes at the same time, but I'm just going to be extruding along the Y. So now I want it to be fairly large. And actually this is like, um, this is a pretty big scale. So sorry for that. So I'm going to make it 300 because I want it to be a wide piece of ribbon there. And you see now I have a ribbon. Now, um, and you see it's in three dimensions, so that's cool. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna give this thickness. So what you would think you would do is, is click on this and then thickness, but I'm gonna show you what happens there and that that's not the tool that we can use. So when I click on this and add thickness or try to add thickness, I get shape is not a solid. Um, however, so if I take, let's hide one of these and let's use the other one. So let's, uh, so let's make it a solid. So we go into part and we do, let's convert to solid. So now I have a solid, let me hide that. And I click a face of it, cause that's what this one, and I click it again. Um, now, and you click faces and then your face and done. And ah, it went away. Now I don't know if I'm doing this wrong or it just can't handle that kind of shape, but thickness doesn't work with that shape for me. So what I did instead was I extruded uh, or no, uh, let's see, what did I do? Oh yeah, I, uh, I offset the shape or construct parallel shapes. So I'm, I'm sure this thickness could work if I do it right or, you know, but uh, you know, one thing I'm learning about FreeCAD is there's, there's multiple paths to a solution. So I'm gonna do tool to offset shape and let's see how that works out. So clicking the tool to offset, offset shape, sorry, gives you this. So you don't have to select a face in this regard. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna set an offset of, let's say just 20. And you see it's already giving me the offset, which I, I love the visual feedback. I don't like the tools in FreeCAD that don't show you what's happening. Uh, that being said, you know, hey, it's this is free. So I'm gonna do fill offset. So now you see, see I have a solid shape um, and I click okay. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is uh, turn off this and I have just my solid ribbon. And that's how you can keep, create a 3D uh, ribbon or basically any kind of, you know, non-regular 3D shape pretty easily with the basic workbenches. Basic workbenches. The hard part is, is getting your base shape in three dimensions using the draft tool. Well, if you like this tutorial, uh, please give me a share and a like and a subscribe and all those things. Click the alarm bell and whatnot. And also have a great day.